OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Okay, so again, my name is Francisco Pinedo from Soledad Adult School here in Soledad, California. I am also a OTAN SME subject matter expert, and today's session is Canvas and ESL. So mainly preparing students for post-secondary. Uh, so I'll explain a little bit about that, why we, um, why we started doing can using Canvas here in Soledad. If you would like a copy of this presentation, you have my email down below, uh, fpinedo at scoey.net. Uh, then that way I could um, send it out to you. So I'll leave this screen up for, for, for a little bit. That way you could write down my email. Uh, and then also I could be more than happy to share it with you. Okay. Okay, so the agenda for this short hour that we have this afternoon is I'm going to do an overview of Canvas and Canvas Commons. Uh, brief intro, intro into Canvas, which is a learning management system, LMS. So other ones that we have heard about are, for example, like Blackboard, like Moodle, which we use a lot. Uh, in adult ed as well. Also the why Canvas for ESL specifically. I've, I have heard discussions where uh, colleagues want to use Canvas for like high school equivalency. And I think, I believe there's a session tomorrow for the high school diploma and using Canvas for, for that purpose, but also for high school equivalency. Those are a little bit harder to, um, I guess to to find. So I'm gonna be going over like some of the ESL stuff that we found using Canvas Common. Also, how to import content into your Canvas shell, what I call it, your Canvas account, how to invite students, and then I'll be doing a live demo. And of course, I'm going to leave time for a QA. So at any point, you can go ahead and chat in a, a question that you have. I'll be more than happy to, um, to answer it for you. Uh, the objective for this afternoon is to inspire you to use Canvas and Canvas Commons for ESL students. So our focus here at Soledad Adult School, this is year two of us uh, using Canvas. I want to say it's year one because the first year it was only my ESL class. This year, it's my other two colleagues and myself using Canvas Common for ESL. Um, so it's, and then we did start in person. So we were in person with students using Canvas in the classroom, teaching them. And then we, we went back to remote. And so we're kind of been flip flopping back and forth. But Canvas has been a great way to keep the student retention. We haven't really lost a lot of the students because we took the time to onboard them into Canvas, explain to them how to use it, guide them in the classroom how to use it. I it teaches students how to use platforms for higher education. Uh, so just down the street from where I am, literally like a quarter of a mile away is the new satellite campus for our community college, the Hartnell Community College, and they use Canvas. So I thought, well, we should start teaching our students to use Canvas so that that way when they go to the community college, it's one less barrier that they have to worry about uh, to be able to be successful at the community college. Uh, also to teach you, uh, you to select and customize ca um, content from Canvas Common. So we'll be talking a lot about Canvas and Canvas Common. Canvas is like, think of it as your website, the site, and Canvas Common is where I pull in a lot of resources in that I'm going to share um, with my students. So the first question I always like to start and ask is, well, and I get asked is, well, what is Canvas? So people for, including myself, the first time I heard the term Canvas, I was thinking of another site that's very similar without the S and I was thinking, ah, doing pictures or flyers, things like that. But no, Canvas with an S, it's actually an LMS, a learning management system that is used by a lot of uh, higher education institutions. And just recently in the last year or so, it's starting to be used more and more in adult education, which makes me very happy. Uh, also our local, um, here in Soledad, our high school is also using, well, they were using Canvas last year. I, I, I don't know, I'm, I haven't really connected with them that much this year, uh, but I do wanna say that they're still using Canvas for a lot, some of their um, subjects. Um, 
and and for the same reason because at that campus they do also offer some community college courses in the evening uh, before our, our campus was open here just down the street so the instructors there were sometimes doing that teaching for the community college so they also use canvas in there with their students uh, it's a managed online course uh, you can create assignments, discussions, you can add modules, you can add your own, or you can import from Canvas Common, or you could share uh, if someone shares with you something. Uh, it fosters students' engagement and success. So the students are, for the most part, very well engaged. Again, I always tell them, like, if it's a post, um, you know, you're going to respond to it and everybody else could see. Uh, so that's when we talk about like being a good digital citizen. So like all that comes into play once we start using Canvas. And mainly for intermediate advanced ESL students, that was my suggestion. Uh, of course, my coworker, she started implementing Canvas with her beginning ESL. Uh, she has been very successful. So now I could say um, you could use it for any level of ESL. It really doesn't matter the um, if they're intermediate advanced, but I began using it with more. I still teach that same group. So for me, it was easier to um, for them to be uh, onboarding with uh, with Canvas. And then my colleague, she was very successful with her beginning uh, pre lit class as well. So this is a overview of the what I call the Canvas shell. So you could see that this is my site. It's fairly um, simple. I don't want to overwhelm the students too much. It has the basic information that they need, like the class syllabus, the Zoom link, my contact information. On the sides, you can see, um, oh, we have Linda says that she uses Canvas with beginning high level uh, English students successfully. Yes, I, I think most of our students, if we onboard them properly and we teach them how to use it, will be very successful. My, 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 you know, I, my mindset changed when I started seeing that, you know, it could be used for all, all students at all levels, not just, um, you know, intermediate advanced, but yes, it is, it is, um, you know, very successful. It, it, it just will take you some time to teach your students how to, um, how to get to that point where they could do it independently. So I have my area for announcements, assignments, discussions. Some of them I don't use, as you could see like the, the ones that have like the little eye with the cross, that means that the student side is not going to see that. So you can also do quizzes, um, grades as well. Um, uh, well, in the there's two versions of Canvas. There's the paid version. I'm using the free version. Uh, this is the free version. In the paid version, which I know many like community colleges have, uh, some adult schools that I've been in contact with also have the paid account. You're actually able to take attendance. Um, so here in our community college, the instructors actually take attendance through Canvas for, for both in-person and um, for distance learning courses as well. So this is what I like to call my Canvas shell. You know, it's very easy to customize. I kept it very simple, not too overwhelming for the students. So you're either gonna click here, 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 or here, and it's gonna take you where you need to go. Uh -oh. Let's see here. Uh, here you could see, for example, in the assignment. So here you would see the students, I would upload the lesson for, for the week, and then it would have the due date, and then the student would come in into their Canvas account, and they would click on whatever lesson we're working on, and they would do, do the work on. So it's also teaching the students organization skills, like, okay, I'm starting with unit five, lesson one, work my way down to lesson six. Lesson six was kind of big, so I broke it up into, into different parts. Uh, so then the student knows automatically, and then they also get an email notification whenever I upload a content or when something is uh, open in Canvas uh, to do. So they know exactly that on Tuesdays, they're going to log into Canvas and they're going to see um, this week's assignment. Of course, you don't see this week's because this was a screenshot I took last week um, for, for this presentation. When the student clicks on an assignment, they can do the assignment within Canvas. So I don't have to be emailing them a document and having them emailing me back. I could simply select the assignment as an annotated document. So the student would see this when the student will open up um, 
this right here. Let's say I click, let's pretend I click right there and it took me to this one here. So in here, I'm going to be able to annotate, answer the question. You could see that there's a chat feature, which I would click on it. And then I would type in my answer right here. Uh, of course, it, uh, uh oh, it will have the instructions uh, here because it, this is not, this is from the teacher side. So you're not able to see like all the things that I put, but for the student side, I'm able to put the instructions. I'm able to put, um, um, do all that. And then when the student finishes the documents, so you can see that this document is eight pages. So that means some of it is reading and it's reading comprehension. So I would give them a time of, um, Let's say you have a couple of days to do it and then uh, they will get a notification as well. Students could highlight, as you could see here, they can also, um, uh, if there's something that, they, there's a lot of things that I say, okay, you're not gonna do number five, for example. So I cross it off or they cross it off as well, or if they want to underline, highlight something. So it's very uh, good because it eliminates a lot of the uh, paperwork that, that would go into play if I was to print this out or the student was to print this out. And then at the end, there's an area where it says submit. So when once it's submit, I get a notification that it is um, submitted. I do have a question um, of what do what is my uh, opinion about using digits? Um, 6.1. So Marina, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing your name right. Um, I don't is it referring to, I'm thinking it's referring. Yeah, how you organize the lesson step by step or on, the, mm -hmm. on the canvas, you had lesson six uh -huh, or unit mm -hmm. five less uh -huh, that. I tried that. Uh, oh, I get, okay. So yeah, like six point, okay. <laughs> uh, this year, my students, it's a very interesting group. I tried that and they were, going in the wrong areas. So when I began doing like part A, part B, they seem to have gotten it better. I, and the reason I modeled it is because when the students at the here at the elementary school, they use Seesaw and some other um, programs, that's how the teachers break it up, like part A, part B. So I think the parents are more familiar to see, because a lot of my adult ed students also have children here in the uh, elementary school. So and I've seen my nephew's um, Seesaw account, which is another learning management system. And they kind of have it like part A, part B, part C. So I tried experimenting with that. You could see here, I still did it a little bit different. I was still experimenting. I put lesson three. Um, that was a little bit successful. You could see right here, I'm doing it that way. But what I'm finding it easier is that when I tell the students, okay, today we're doing lesson six, part A or part B or right away. And I'm not getting emails like, oh, um, we already did this or I already submitted that. So it seems to work. So again, it might depend on your population. Again, this year, I have a very interesting group where it seems that this is working <laughs> for, for me, but it might work for you. I mean, I do like the option of like 6.1, 6.2, 6.3, uh, definitely. Uh, another comment, I didn't realize that there is a free version of Canvas. Uh, is that Canvas comment? I'm gonna get to that point also. Um, uh, how do, oh, feedback on assignments. Okay, so once I, once I go live on the actual, um, my Canvas shell, you'll be able to see that. So I'm gonna hold those questions a little bit um, more um later on of the, how do i assign feedback because i do give a lot of feedback there's rubrics there's you know there's a lot um so how does solid that adult school use canvas so we use courses that are college aligned because we are importing the courses from the santa ana college that they produce in Canvas Commons for, for Canvas. Uh, so think of Canvas Commons as maybe the site where you will, um, I, okay, I, I come from the time when I had a smart board and within the smart board, there was this external site where I would go and I would pull lessons. Some of them were free, some of them were paid. Um, and then, I imported into my Canvas account. So Canvas Commons is kind of like the, 
repository maybe where there's a lot of uh, lessons, units, and even whole curriculum that I import. Uh, so it's College Align because that's what they're using for their non-credit, I believe their non-credit ESL. Uh, it teaches them, again, it's giving them that experience of this is what I'm going to see in higher ed. And it's a great for, way for student interaction because students can interact with one each other respectfully, of course, uh, responding to comments, responding to someone's um, work, or um, we also in our classes, we have students do presentations. Uh, for example, at the beginning of the semester, like maybe like mid-September, they did a presentation about themselves, about their culture, and students would comment, you know, uh, they would comment and they would, um, you know, of course, we would tell me like, what is appropriate, what is not appropriate. Um, so we do a lot of video audio. There's also an area where um, the student could record their voice and is reading like a passage or something if we want to, uh, we want to see how well they're reading. Um, so it's a great way for student interaction and for student uh, communication. <clears throat> So Canvas Common is a free learning uh, repository that lets educators to find, import, and share resources. So Common is available uh, for free for all teacher accounts, whether it's paid or the, um, or the free version. You can always customize the comment. Like you'll see, I'll show you in just a bit how a lot of the content from Santa Ana College uh, is not relevant to students here in Soledad Adult School. For example, when it says contact the, the school counselor, well, we really don't have a school. Well, we do sharing with the continuation school, but we don't have all the resources that the community college has. So a lot of the information I do take out. A lot of the work, again, because they, they produced it, um, is relevant to Santa Ana City. So a lot of it, uh, I'm, I'm, or Orange County, I'm able to customize it as well. But I always give credit to the original owner. I make sure that whatever information I'm using, I always uh, give credit in this case to Santa Ana College, because again, it's teaching the students that you're always, uh, it's always good to cite your, um, your sources. What can I do with Canvas Commons? So with Canvas Commons, you can search for content relevant to your subject, uh, mainly ESL. So a lot of, I, I mean, there is not a lot in it for adult ed, um, but what there is, it's mainly for ESL, uh, build courses. I don't know if, um, I know uh, my friend Jennifer, she was working on a Canvas for, um, for citizenship, I need to double check with her. But you can build the course from the ground up. You could customize it on your own and build it. Uh, you can create, add your own lessons, add your own um, um, material that you're going to use. Uh, you would share the material with your colleagues. Again, we want to make sure that we respect all of the what we ever up what we upload. Make sure we're respecting the copyrights. Um, you know, for if we're using X, Y, or Z curriculum, we want to make sure that, you know, we are respecting the copyright um, policy for that. Uh, and people would recognize your content. So if you start seeing more and more, uh, you're adding more and more things into Canvas, um, you know, people will be able to recognize you. Um, this last one here, I remember I was talking to Penny Pearson a couple months ago about this. Commons, uh, Canvas Commons is an OER, an open education resource, based on how the course is copyrighted. So I don't want to say everything in Canvas Commons is OER because that would be not true, but it's based on however the what the module, the lesson the curriculum that you import, the course, how, how they're copyrighted. But again, because we do use uh, a lot of the open education uh, resources in common, the one that we are using is, um, is, uh, is an OER. Uh, do you have to share your, no, you don't have to share your material. I mean, you could just keep, keep your material in your Canvas account. You don't have to share it with, um, with um with comments so think of comments so those i come from the k-12 background uh, background so for example the site where i want to think like with comments is the uh teacher paid teachers so with the teacher paid teachers they use they develop something they upload it 
and then somebody else downloads it for a profit. It's kind of the same, except in this way, you, in comments, they're not charging. But it's if you upload it into comments, someone could be able to retrieve it. But if you keep it locally on your own, or maybe just share it with your colleagues, then it, it, it'll be, you will keep it private. Okay, hope that answers that question. Let me see here. Uh, so this is an example in my Canvas. So I have, for example, for my advanced ESL, um, right now I have, it's a little bit different. Uh, this is a screenshot from, I believe, earlier or last semester, I believe. So you could see that here on my dashboard, I have all the different uh, courses that I have. Uh, down here, you're going to see that there is a little C with an arrow that is pointing that says comments. That's where I would click if I want to go into um, into Canvas Commons. But first, going back to a question is where they didn't know that Canvas had free. Um, there was a free account. Uh, you would click on this site here, instructor.com backslash register. So if I click on it. Uh -oh. Oh, it's not found. OK. So Francisco, I just uh -huh. went to um, let me put the link in. OK. Oh, did you get OK? You got it. I'm going to put the link in. Too. Yes. OK, got it. OK, so here to create your account is very simple. Uh, you would put your first name, last name, and then the type of account teacher. Now, for the teacher one, you do have to provide a email that is attached to a educational institution. So if I do my personal email at gmail.com, it's not gonna allow me. It has to be a, uh, for example, I use my k12.ca.us email and, and then here you fill out that information. So again, what you could do is you could create content, assignment, quizzes, discussions, video conferences as well. Um, you can upload video lessons as well. Uh, you would have some personalized learning, um, standard-based grade books. Uh, you can use the Canvas app. I have it here on my, um, on my iPad, and it's actually great for, for when you are doing the feedback for the students. It's so much easier to do it on the iPad, for me at least. I work a little bit different than everybody else, but it's, at least it's easier for me doing it on the iPad than going on the computer and 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 doing that. Uh, it also it integrates with third party applications. That's mainly again kind of like, hey, you know, well, we could do this, but uh, for the paid version. So I really just do it to create contents, assignments, uh, quizzes. Yeah, I, I do some of them. Uh, discussions and then the video conference again. Um, I, we use Zoom in our district. We can only use um, Zoom if we're teaching with students, so we don't really use that. We use um, we use Zoom in that. So if you don't have a account, or many times in the community college, you do have an account, but you're very limited. I believe in the community college because uh, I, I also work part time for our local community college. I'm not able to import anything from Canvas Commons because of the way how they are set up. But because I also work in a school district, I use my regular school district account and I'm able to um, to do that. And then I'm able to to import into from Canvas Commons. Uh, let's see what I have here. So things to consider is using an institutional Canvas account might limit what content you can import. So that's what I was just talking about right now. If if you are using, uh, it might not be the the same for all higher ed uh, institutions that use Canvas, but my experience, what I've experienced from some local community colleges is that they won't even have that little function, that little C with the arrow. They won't even um, have that because it's so um, it's so restrictive. So we know like it can be a little bit restrictive sometimes. Uh, free accounts also have limitations on things you could do, like for example, taking attendance, doing student reports, thing like the, like that, um, tracking, doing the charts. But then again, you know, most of us in the adult school, we use X, Y, or Z uh, attendance platform. So we really won't 
I mean, I, I personally don't find a need for it. Um, and one suggestion is that please, please, please don't tomorrow set up your free Canvas account and say, oh, Francisco from Solidat told us it's free and we could do it. Check with your admin first before starting a Canvas account. Yeah. Okay, so make sure you ask them first. <laughs> if they don't know about Canvas, educate them a little bit about Canvas. Let them know the benefit of having a Canvas account uh, because I have heard situations. Okay, so let's just keep it at that. Uh, so always ask. Let me... Uh, so here in Solida, like I said, we use the curriculum from Santa Ana College, uh, all levels of ESL now from beginning all the way to advanced. It's aligned to, um, to uh, community college standards uh, because it was produced in a community college setting. Uh, here in Canvas Common, again, whatever I search, and I'm just doing a, I always like doing a screenshot just in case the internet decides to act up and not let me do what I wanted to, I'm going to show you next. But let's say that I am looking for content. So I'm going to see here that there's a course. A course means it's the whole everything, like the whole, think of it as a curriculum that's from lesson unit one all the way to unit 10, all the lessons, everything's there. Uh, you also have modules, which are like units. And then you have lessons, which would be like in, well, individual lessons. Uh, again, you do have to find what material is relevant for you because I could if I type something as broad as verbs, it's you know very specific. But if I want, for example, past tense verbs or, or whatnot, and then you could customize by grade level uh, because Canvas is again mainly geared for K-12. Um, adult ed, for example, Santa Ana, and there's a couple of other places that do add uh, adult ed content, but most of the users in Canvas are K-12. Um, instructors. So that's going to be that information. So for example, here, if I'm doing a search on verb tenses, um, here I could see that it's either a quiz, an assignment, a module. So these are small things. So these, and then it'll give you the, the grade. So you could customize, uh, do the filter by grade as well. So again, you would think of your class and kind of see, well, uh, well, you know, you could easily see what's their grade level based on their um, CASA score. You kind of correlate that. And if everybody on the, is on the same um, le uh, grade level, you, you could choose it for that level. Uh, but then again, you would get that information here. If it's a quiz, it's going to tell you um, the author as well. And then how many times it's been downloaded, how many stars, of rating it has, okay. Um, okay, let me just skip this one. Um, okay, okay. So let me go into my Canvas account and then to address some of the questions on the, the feedback one. So again, here again, when I go to the site, even with my credentials, it's it's telling me, do you need a Canvas account? Click here, it's free. Let me just click there so you could see. And then um, it's a, this one here is a little bit different than the link that um, Blair shared with us in the in the chat box or this one, or, or the one that, that I showed you as well. Uh, this one here, you would choose. Uh, I'm a teacher, but then again, it's going to take you back to back to this one. So whether you go the route I just did right now or the route that was from the link, it's going to end end up here. So here is where you would um, do your. And of course, they're going to want to sell you right away, you know, the 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 paid one. So when I log in. So here you could see I have um, the uh, courses that I have. So this is the one that I showed earlier, which is my real one with my students. So I really didn't want to um, play too much with this one because last time I did and I had to redo a lot of the things. So as a teacher, I could see here I have my to-do list, okay? So I purposely left these here so that you could see that it's going to alert me of what I need to do. So for example, here, I have to do 
um, or I guess these students turned it in late because it's five students who submitted the work. And while that's loading, over here on the side, and then you could see sometimes I just put something as simple as great work. Um, so this one was a reading activity that they did and then they responded. So you could see how the student responded. They have their answers here. So then here I could add comments. So when they were talking about feedback, and again, I have this assignment that is just a point and a, a comment. You can also uh, do rubrics as well. I mean, that's more time consuming, uh, even for me. Uh, so I try not to do rubrics. I mean, I do tell the students what I expect. And then here I could add the comment. Uh, let's say that the work, it was just not acceptable. I can reassign it to the student and then it will open the link back um, for them. Okay. How do you make your inter uh, worksheet interactive? Okay. That starts from whenever you're doing an assignment. So let's say that I'm going to do, oh, I don't have anything saved on this computer. Uh, but when I add an assignment, you would, I would click right here. And then, so here I would, put the name of the assignment, the instructor, uh, the instruction, not the instructor. Um, it's an assignment. If it's going to be points, uh, complete and complete, a letter grade, a percentage. And then, so this is where it's going to be. If it's going to be something that you want them to annotate online, you would do online. So see how when I, when I have no submission, there's nothing. When I click on online, it's going to give me an option. Do I want text entry, website? I do this one, student annotation. And then here, I'm going to select the file, the PDF, you know, you preferably saved on a PDF. So when I upload it, let me see if I have anything on this computer. No, I don't have anything, like literally no documents on this computer. Um, but let's pretend I selected a PDF and then I do upload. So then what the student is going to see is a student is going to see this right here. They're going to see this document here, but now they could go in and they can um, write in it. So you're able to do there, the student will be able to do this. So, and then of course there's different options. I always tell them stick with black, don't give me one color here, one color there, because, yeah. Um, so the original, uh, no, actually, that's a good question. So the curriculum that we're using, because I'm teaching a, a ECE ESL course. So we are using the, um, this course is from Mount Diablo Adult School that was on, oh, my mind blew it, uh, uh, for their uh, early childhood education course. So it was a document, a Word doc, so then in Word, I converted it into PDF and then I uploaded it into um, Canvas. So you could create your own worksheet in Word, Google, um, Google Docs, just save it as a PDF. And then once it's saved as a PDF, you can import it here, you know, uh, as a PDF. Uh, of course, for example, like this is from, from the curriculum from Mount Diablo. So we always give them credit. And then also within the curriculum, uh, I believe you saw it here somewhere, it has also credit to uh, the original author. So um, we also could do media recordings if we want students to upload a video uh, or upload a voice recording, we can also do that. Uh, me, for my course that I'm teaching, it's a lot of the media, doing a small video, like um, doing an activity with a child and then also the student annotation. Um, so as long as, as it's saved as a PDF, it will work. PDFs, um, because when the student opens it, whoops, when the student opens it, it, it will be a, um, a PDF. So then you could, but it'll be a PDF that they could write in, okay? So that eliminates a lot of uh, paperwork for me uh, in the discussions. We really haven't done a lot of discussions uh, because it's more 
in the work that they do or the videos. So for example, here is an example, and I think I have them locked, so that's why you, no one's able to see them. So here the students would, for example, here, please introduce yourself to your classmates. So then you would see how some of them respond to each other and so forth. Uh, I would add my course uh, syllabus. For example, this is what I'm going to be teaching every week. Uh, there's also the calendar feature, which I've taught my students how to use a calendar um, to be more organized. And then you would see here the area that says comments. So for that one, let me log into the sample site that I have for this, because then I'll probably do something and then I'll hear my students will be emailing me like, why did you add this? Uh, okay, so when I go into comments, let's say I'm teaching a ESL course. Pardon our internet here in Solidad, it's a little bit slow sometimes. Okay, so what I could do is I could do, you know, ESL, it's very broad. So it's going to open up a lot of different, um, different options, different things. So then that's where you would look at the information. Like if it's a course, oh, this one looks interesting. It's a grammar course. It says it's all great. So I could click on it. And then there's a preview. Okay, so the details look, so I could see here the, the details. I could see that it was from the University of uh, Florida. On the preview, it will show you like a preview, pretend you're seeing the preview uh, of the course. So if I like it, I choose it. If I didn't like it, uh, this one here says ESL1. It's a course as well. So you could see on this one here, there are 29 assignments, 23 pages, there was one discussion, 12 quizzes, 114 files. Uh, so for example, here, it's uh, all about me and my family. So I would click on it. You would see that there is a video example, right, which is a YouTube video. Okay, so we watched the video. And then you would click here where it's uh, like a Google slide. So you could see, so I could start seeing this one. And, and of course, it's, it's gonna wanna copy it into your, into your, um, into your drive. So it, those are some of the things that maybe, well, I like this, but I don't like this. And then here you can import it or, or download. So you could import it into your account and use uh, and use it for later. So this is what I say, like I take time to really look at what you like. So for example, for, and then, oops, I spelled it wrong, here we go. Uh, can you only, yes, you can only import parts. So uh, here, for example, yeah, and that that's, a, right on time uh who, who let me see who did the i'm sorry my, i'm used to working with two monitors right now i only have one so i can't really see everything so uh marine says you can uh can you import only parts not the whole canvas shell yes so you're going to see this one here so this one here from santa ana is the whole course so that means it's everything or I could just do a module. So a module, think of it as a chapter. So for example, this one here is on health. It's for uh, intermediate high ESL students. So I could choose everything or I could only choose one. So let's say I like this one, but I'm only going to choose certain parts. Uh, I could use the filter to narrow if I want only um, courses. If I want um, modules, assignments, quizzes, discussions, documents, video. So let's say that I want only courses. So I could filter courses. And then it's going to show me that from what I'm searching for, for Santa Ana uh, College, these are the courses. So let's say I don't want courses, I want modules and not courses. So then here, it's only going to show me the modules that was produced by um, 
in this case, I, I'm using Santa Ana because that's what I, what I typed. So then let's say that I find something that I like. Let's say I like this one here because I'm going to teach about employment. Maybe it's tied to a, a EL civics task or to something that I'm doing um, you know, with my regular curriculum and I'm using this as supplemental. So then I would see the preview and everything. And then if I really like it, I would click on the import. So here you go. And then you could see there's the introduction, there's, and then the point system and everything. I would click import or download. So once I click the import or download, because this is a module, it's going to ask me, well, where is it? Do I want it? Do I want it in all my courses? Do I want it in the one for my, my actual class? Or do I want it in for my OTAN? So let's say I want it only for the OTAN folder. I'm not going to click on it because of time and because sometimes it does take maybe a couple of minutes to import all the information into your Canvas account. So once I click here, you're going to see a notification on your screen that says it's being imported into um, into into this into this course right here because remember there's the ECE and there's the OTAN course in my account. So in my account. I created one, so I imported the ESL, the beginning low. So this is what I imported. So once I imported the whole course, this is what I'm going to see. And this is where you could really customize it, where you could edit. So I would go to edit. And then once you edit here, again, I'm sorry, it's our internet's really. <laughs> so here I could customize and maybe this class uh, again, I maybe I don't want this banner, but because it might confuse students, so I could take it out and then I would say uh, ESL beginning one and then the instructor name. And then here I could see, for example, you could see that there are links here that might not be relevant to my adult school, like the contact instructor, well, we'll, we'll see that one in, in just a bit. But like the virtual, we don't have a virtual welcome center here in Soledad, so I'll go ahead and erase that. We don't have a support, so I'm gonna erase that. I will leave this uh, logo right here. I will leave it because I always wanna make sure that I give credit to the author. So then I save that. So now my, what I call the storefront, is going to look a little bit different. Now it's, you remember the banner on the top? Now I've removed that, I've customized it. This is how the student is going to see it. So this is what the student will see. They'll see the homepage, they'll see this, they'll see the modules. So the modules, so let's say module one. So these are all the activities that the student is going to do in module one. So let's say, for example, um, this one here, where the student creates their Canvas profile, I want that due on Friday instead of Wednesday. So then I would go in the same. I would go in. Well, for that, I need to leave the student view because then I cannot edit. And then I would go edit. And instead of saying it's due on Wednesday, I'm going to say it is due on, on Friday. And then I'll save that. So then the student is going to see that now it's due on Friday. So once you download anything that you download from Canvas Common into your Canvas account, you can go in and you can customize it. You can customize it. You could really make it your own um, to fit for your students' um, needs as well. Uh, for example, here, uh, the syllabus. So here it has, and what I like is that it has like the, what I call like the bare bone template of you here, you would insert, you could insert a PDF of your syllabus. You can here uh, add a picture of the instructor in a short bio. Uh, if there's any any material, any books that they need to purchase, the SLOs, the student learning outcomes, so that you could really customize it. And then every time you do something, 
you would just make sure that you press um, save. Uh, here you have rubrics also that you could create. So for each assignment, there is a rubric and you can customize it. So you can add more or add less. Well, in this case, it would be adding more. Uh, and then here, let's say that you don't, these are things you don't want students to see. So you could click them and unclick them. So uh, if I don't want the students to see, for example, files or something, it would be disabled. That means the student won't be able um, to see. So with comments, again, is what I'm using to build my, my Canvas site, my Canvas that I'm going to share with the student. So I could go ahead. I try to keep it simple. I upload one whole course. I try not to add more because remember, each course might be a different author. So sometimes if I'm referencing, okay, the work from Santa Ana, then I reference, okay, the work from this school, students will get a little confused sometimes. So, and then also sometimes it's not going to be an easy, like a seamless um, um, transition for that. So let me see. So on this way, so now I have my, my canvas set up and everything, and then I want to publish it. So now I've done all the changes I need to do. So now I want to publish it. So then I would click right here uh, where it would say publish. I don't know why it's not letting me, but it will let you. Uh, you will click publish and then it will publish it. And once you are, have it published, you're going to see it. Oh, of course, it's published already. That's why. So once it's already, uh, when you're still working on it, you're going to see it down here where it says unpublished. When you're ready to go live, share it with your students, it's going to go from here to the top part where it says published courses. And then from there is where I would send it to, to the students. So if I want my students to access my canvas, I would go to people. And then here, so you could see, these are all the students that I sent the invitation to. So then I want to add a person. So I would add the person's name. And then they're a student, they're in this class. And then you would just click uh, add their name. Again, I don't know why this step is a little repetitive. And then their email. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I will put their email right here. Sorry. So then I'm going to add the student's name. And then, whoops, hopefully that, well, someone doesn't have that real email. Uh, once you click add user, it's going to send the student an invitation for them to join this class. By them clicking on that link and then just confirming a few things like their name, the course, and everything, you're going to see here who accepted. So see all these students accepted. This person here, um, she's actually a coworker, so I, I told her to purposely leave it there. If it says pending and you hear the student, hi, oh, teacher, I couldn't log in or I forgot or I didn't get the information, you can go in and check and then you could see, um, you could resend it again. Or if they say they didn't get it or whatnot, um, you could do that and you will be able to resend the, the uh, oh, here we go. Here it has this, the, um, uh, to resend. So this one here would resend it. To, oh, I resent it. I need to let her know not to accept. Uh, and then that way you could just simply do that. Okay. Uh, files. That's something I really, right here when it says files, is just things that I upload um, with the students. It's not really a lot, mainly what I use. So all everything that I put in, in the um, homework, in the assignments, would appear right here as well. Uh, is Canvas like Google Classroom that if you have a paid account and send invitations to students? Um, I really have ha don't have experience with Google Classroom, so I would not be able to speak on that. Uh, what I will be able to say is that uh, if you notice the students that I sent the invitation to, 
it was their personal uh, email, okay? Uh, except this one here. This one, the student had their Hartnell uh, email, but everybody else, it was their personal. So it could be a Google email, it could be Yahoo, it could be one from the community college. It, it's, you know, it, it's open to, uh, as you could see here, there's a student who has an email, uh, this one here, uh, dot mx that means it's an email that was created in mexico the students still here they're using that email so you don't need no uh, and i think i know where the question's getting at to like when melinda says you're in the club or you're not in the club in this one it doesn't matter the status you can be in your in, in the canvas club with uh how does she mention it with the um the pub account or the non-pub account uh, something like that I'm, I'm kind of remembering when she would talk about uh google in that regard okay uh i know in this uh tdls there's going to be a lot more sessions with canvas so i hope i have sparked your interest in you using canvas uh i just do have to say one thing it's not going to be something that you can I heard it today and I'm going to start implementing it to, uh, tomorrow. Uh, it will take time, as you could see, just for me choosing the course, uh, building the course, editing things. It will take time um, and it will take a lot of onboarding your students on teaching them how to do this uh, from the student side. Uh, with me, it was easier because it was me and my uh, team of two ESL teachers who we worked together in creating this. So uh, you will have to invest some time, but the payoff has been great. We've been able to keep student retention uh, at about 75 to 80% because they're engaged in Canvas. So um, it's, I know right now we're struggling a lot with student retention. So this is a great way to retain them. I would plan maybe for next school year, if you're interested in doing something like this, because we're already at March, most of us end at the end of May. Um, so thank you very much. And please, please, please do your evaluation for this session. Uh, I would really appreciate it. And it will really help me for my future uh, presentations that I do. Okay, so let me see a couple of other uh, was the interactive PDF. The interactive PDFs were in the free version. Yes, so that one for Linda uh, Lehman, uh, it was in the free version. Uh, and the student, my students use Kami to, oh, oh, yeah, I've heard of Kami too, yeah, uh, okay, okay, so thank you very much, everybody, enjoy the rest of TDLS, hopefully next year it will be in person, and I cannot wait to actually be wandering around the class or wherever we're at um, in, um, in, a, in a real uh, session, not just sitting here in a chair, <laughs> okay, thank you very much, everybody.